Before I begin this episode, here's a quick run through the alternate pathway of Snake Man's level. Greetings everyone, my name is Zatterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Super Danny 2. During the last part, I defeated Skull Man, Crystal Man, and Snake Man. So in this part, I'll defeat the remaining three Rod Masters, starting off by going after Night Man. As the Night Fusion is required to collect the letters at Flame Man and Shadow Man stages. Speaking of which, I'd like to correct an error I made during the previous two episodes. You don't need any fusions to collect the letters at Gyro Man and Snake Man's levels. You need the Gyro Fusion in order to collect the letters at Pharaohs and Skulls. And last but not least, you need the Pharaoh Fusion in order to collect the letters at Crystal Man and Night Man's levels. So it seems to be split between two for each fusion, or non fusion in the case of Gyro and Snake. On that note, here's Snake Fusion. You can fire up to four Surt Snakes at a time, and your special attack just fires the snake directly forwards. It seems to also be able to one-shot certain enemies. The Charged Snake does about the same damage as a regular Charge Shot. Don't touch your head against the ceiling here. In fact, for safety, I'll be using the Ferro Fusion special ability. And still fail anyway because I didn't realize it'd go that low. That was all my fault. Off screen, I decide to farm back up to 4 lives as I'll need them in the future. The Moliers are still rather durable. Sadly, it doesn't act like a charge shot against the skeletons. You still need Super Danny for that. Oh, that was a close one. I usually use the Jar Fusion to get up here. Another instance of the usage of the ladder presses. We also saw them in the first half of Snake Man's level. More so during the alternate pathway. But, but by taking this route, we get a free Dew Tank. Of course, you can also get it by using the Jar Fusion. I'm just giving this fusion some time to shine. Of 
Green Eddy. Thank you for the life refill. In general, Green Eddy is super useful. Now we have these pop-up attackers, of course. Let's do this as Skullman due to his increased mobility. Suddenly we have the crushers or rather presses from Metal Man's level. Now, in order to collect that letter, you do need Ferroman's spike walking abilities. To correct an earlier statement back in episode 1, you have the spike walking abilities regardless of whether you have your head on or not. And I find it rather odd that we have the press segment over there and nowhere else in the stage feels a bit sloppy and underutilized. Anyways, time to face off Nightman. I do have his weakness, but I'm gonna try facing him first using the Buster, and see how it goes. That's his alternative attack. Wow! I did it, Buster only! His weakness, by the way, is a Surf Snake. Then again, Nightman is one of the easier bosses to deal with in this game, outside of his alternative attack, but even then, his alternative attack isn't that difficult to dodge anyway. He's one of the more fun bosses to Buster Duel. Next up, let's go after Flame Man. To the right of me is where the letter is located. In order to blow open that steel block, you need to use the Night Fusion special ability which throws the Night Maze directly forwards. You can fire the Night Crush in that arc, only one arc though. And the Night Fusion is the slowest of all the fusions. However, if you jump around, he moves around quite quickly. A lot faster than what you would expect. Also, as long as you have the shield up, you're protected against enemy attacks. But you can only use the Maze when you're on solid ground, you can't use it while in mid-air. There's another nice characteristic of the Night Fusion. Come on, hit me please. You have absolutely no knockback, so it is useful for certain platforming segments, because you have the same jumping speed as regular Super Danny. Keep that in mind. You can't slide in this fusion though. But you can climb up ladders. The Shadow Man platforms work about the same way as it did in Mega Man 3. As in, once you jump on them, it's actually... the hitbox for it is actually smaller than what it graphically looks like. That was fixed in Magmal 2 and Mega Man Maker. So to not take any risks, I'll use the Gyro Fusion's flight ability. This physics quirk also applies to Mega Man Endless, so keep that in mind. If you recall my Mega Man Endless LP, you'll know I died several times to the Shadow Man platforms.
Surprise shield attacker. Kind of a jerkish placement if you were to ask me. That's an interesting quirk. I didn't realize that earlier. You can destroy the Sniper Joe hammers using the Crystal Eye. That's useful. Let's try going for that extra life. I think I can do it. It's pretty easy to get as long as you have the Jar Fusion. Another pretty easy to get do tank. I'm not sure if the Ferro Fusion's Mamira form protects you against the oil fires. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I know the Skull Barrier protects you against the oil fires in Mega Man Maker. Time to face off against Flame Man. First off, I'll try facing him using regular Danny, and then I'll use his weakness. Almost there. I mistimed my movement over there. Compared to the other Roadmasters, he's around the medium in terms of difficulty, depending on what he does. It's that large flame blast that I'm worried about. Alright, weakness time. His weakness is the Pharaoh Shot and the Pharaoh Wave. It absolutely destroys him. Something else of note in comparison with Powered Up is that every Roadmaster has a regular shot and a special ability. Whereas in Powered Up, every Roadmaster only had a special ability. So once you ran out of special weapon energy, you couldn't use that fusion again, or at least you couldn't fire with them until you regain some weapon energy. Whereas over here, you're not completely defenseless if you're out of weapon energy. Last but not least, Shadow Man. Same as before, let's showcase Flame Man. He can fire up to 6 flame shots at a time. And they can pass through walls. They deal 1 point of damage per hit. And they are useful for enemies who are shielded or try to jump into your projectiles. And your special ability is the Flame Blast. Though his projectiles are a bit slower. One use of the Flame Blast.
Uh, here come the holograms. The Skull Beer can also protect against those Hammer Joe Hammers, but only one of them at a time. Now that I think about it, in comparison with Powered Up, the differences between each of the fusions in terms of physical capabilities is less. There are less crazy physics differences. They're a lot closer to each other in terms of movement capabilities. Only some of them are different, like the Night Fusion, Gyro Fusion, and the Skull Fusion. The rest are mostly the same outside their special abilities and projectiles. Skull moves faster. Gyro jumps higher, Night moves slower but jumps the same and has no knockback, and later on the Shadow Man fusion also moves a bit faster. Or more specifically, it slides faster. I'm not taking any chances with these kinds of platforms. And the 8th and final letter is right over here. We're all set to get the bonus level near the end of the game. All of this is perfectly doable in base form, but I'd rather not risk it. Especially because of how close I am to the end, and how far the checkpoints can be from each other. As usual, I'll first try facing off against Shadow Man Buster only, then I'll use his weakness. This is the first time I've ever been able to defeat Shadow Man with just a buster. In this game, that is. We've defeated all 8 Roadmasters, but now the game transitions over to the second set. Now we have to face off against the 4 Mega Man Killers. Anchor, Quint, Belade, and Punk. But I'll be covering all of those four stages in the next part. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. Toodles!